giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello, everybody. Welcome to We the North recap for first updates now. I'm Parth Patel. I'm Pretty Trevetti. I'm Chris. I'm Lenny. <laughs> and I'm Dan. He's just Dan. All I'm right. Just Dan. Just Dan. Let's yeah. jump right into some discussions. Week two had a lot going on. Um, I know we were all uh, at one event or another. Um, I want to start by talking about evolution of the game. I know it's only two weeks in. We've seen very little of Destination Deep Space. I'm not going to do the plug. Um, and <laughs> I think overall we need to talk about have we seen an evolution of the game? Is there something we're seeing now that we didn't see week one or vice versa? Um, I think overall, uh, I was, as I was saying earlier, at Humber, um, only 32 teams were there. And of the 32 teams, I think three teams with level three climbs went unpicked in favor of um, of teams that were just better driven. So I think there's definitely more emphasis on defense in week two there were, than there was in week one over the ability of teams to just get points. I think also just like if you have one level three climber and you know you're not going to get a second one on that platform, like what's the point of having one besides maybe just as a backup? But if you're confident in yours, then a good defense buck can go a long way now. And I feel like we're seeing some heavy defense and eliminations. Not that we weren't in week one necessarily, but I just think it's gotten a lot more intense. And especially it started to leak into qualifications as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for yeah sure. I, would, I, would, I would agree with some of that. Um, uh, defense is definitely getting a lot harder, bigger and harder hitting. Um, oh, yeah. With teams not really going for the rocket as much anymore, I think a lot of teams and balls are like, yeah, maybe Rocket, but let's just get as many points as we can. Just sh show some cargo around and see what goes from there. Well, real quick to jump on that, too. I've, I've had some conversations with team actually uh, saying that they've considering not even doing the high stuff anymore, maybe just doing, you know, low and second at most. Um, I think it's a little short-sighted, actually. So uh, I'm hoping that later on in the weeks we'll see actually see more Rockets getting completed. And uh, hopefully people that actually uh, decided to go for the high and the rocket will see some payoff there. Yeah. And one of the things, you know, I'm seeing in chat a little bit, people talking about you pick a climber to take them off, uh, off the board, right? You don't want other people to have the climber. Um, speaking of climbers, though, one of the evolutions that we did see a little bit, maybe not in our region, but multi-level three climbs. Is that a thing? What do we think? What do we think about the double, triple, uh, you know, level three habitats? I personally think uh, it, you're contributing a lot of resources to do it this early in the season. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's cool. I don't think it's necessarily game a bit of points, but, I mean, putting getting three robots together and having them all be, you know, in line together, ready to go up on the platform at a certain time, that's some coordination right there. And, you know, maybe you have to cut a few seconds short when you could have gotten one more ball or one more hatch or something like that in that last amount of time. There's a lot of factors for it. Uh, I don't think we've necessarily seen just, like, what, you know, multi-level three climbers can do just yet. But right now, I'm, like, a little bit cautious on them right now. Yeah, uh, I mean, Lake Superior had a, had a double climb in E-Limbs, and it wasn't, enough to, it wasn't enough to win. It wasn't enough to continue going on further in the round so um double climbs the double triple might not be enough uh triple three level climbs could be there but um i think if you have enough scoring power and really quick teams to just throw in cargo and hatches you might be able to overcome it so 
Yeah, I think what we'll see more as weeks go on is more double climbs instead of single climbs for teams. We still might see, you know, only one level three climb, maybe two. I think we'll eventually get to the point where two is kind of the norm for level threes. Hope, you know, maybe, hopefully. But I think we're going to see a lot more uh, level two climbs because those can be game deciding in a lot of cases. All right. Well, with that, I think uh, we'll uh, transfer over on some recaps. Uh, I'll just kick it off with, uh, I was at the Duluth Northern Lights Regional. Awesome event, as always, that impending snowstorm, changing the schedule around. Uh, so that was kind of a fun thing. <laughs> just, that Minnesota thing. just Minnesota things. Snowstorms, impending doom, you know, try to get the regional going quicker. Um, but it was there were some awesome plays, some very interesting strategies. Um, there was a surprise win by the AC Alliance in the quarterfinals in their first match. They took down 5-2-5 and the Nightcrawlers in the in the match one, and I was kind of a, a surprise to see that, but um, Nightcrawlers 20-52, Swartogs 5-2-5 and 36-30. Stampede, they were able to reevaluate and just continue going all the way into the finals and end up winning it. Um, and they were playing 36-30, was playing defense with a McKinnon drive robot. It was ridiculous. <laughs> It was awesome. And they were doing it really well, too, except for their bumpers falling off and probably rolling around a bit too too often with uh, without a bumper not being disabled quick enough. But they were playing some heavy-hitting defense. It was ridiculous. Um, make good bumpers, everybody. Make good bumpers. And robot shouldn't roll around for 15 seconds without a bumper without being disabled. That was the thing. Um, also, congrats to 4607 CIS on their silver and gold cooling bling. <laughs> um, it's their chairman's award and they were finalists um, also during the break there will be a behind the bumpers interview with the Nightcrawlers from fun host Sky so look forward to that move on to the next event thanks Chris I'm going to give you guys a uh, a pretty just the, the Indiana first St. Joseph's event just got done yesterday I'm still personally recovering I don't even know I have a voice right now I'm exhausted um but I'm super excited for, for Indiana First this season. I think it's wide open, and, and kind of St. Joseph really kind of showed that. Um, we actually had the seventh seed pull off the, the W, um, this competition, um, knocking out both the second seed and the first seed on their way to, to, to get take that banner home. And just that was incredible. The, the, the final matches, I just couldn't believe the level of play we're seeing already in just a week two event. Um, Want to give some quick shout-outs. Um, we got the chairman's winner, 135 EI, uh, 5044, who also got that silver gold cling bling because they also won that event with uh, Cybertooth 3940, 4103 Roboreals, and like I said, 50, uh, 5484. Um, and then the runner ups, 234, 1501, and 7502, a rookie team. Um, super excited for Indy. We have seven rookie teams this year, and um, just I'm just so incredibly proud of the, the performances I saw. And uh, that being said, we have a quick interview with uh, 3940. Uh, Producer Tyler will be queuing that up here soon and kind of give you their perspective on taking home the dub as a seven seed. What's up, everybody? It's Lenny here with First Updates Now, here with the uh, seven seed alliance captains and winners of the first St. Joseph Indiana District event, Team 3940 Cybertooth. And, uh, Guys, just first off, wow, right? Being the seven seed to knock off the first and second seed all in one go. Take me kind of through the emotions and how you guys feeling right now and how, how does it feel to just to be, you know, the winners of the very first event? Uh, it's definitely really exciting. Uh, being the seventh seed, I wasn't really uh, expecting this much, uh, but it's just really satisfying after a long build season. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really indescribable. We haven't won since our rookie year, and we just were confident, and uh, the emotions are, <laughs> it's really hard to describe. Um, I feel amazing, and we kept our strategy the whole time, the same we kind of adapted as we needed to, but we just kept strong and did what we needed to do. The whole alliance did. And of course, you yourself also winning the uh, finalists of the Dean's List too. So now we win as a seven seed, Dean's List, of course, another imagery award for you guys. I mean, it's, it, you must be really proud as a coach too, Liz. I mean, what can you say about these girls and your team in general? 
I am super proud of these these students. They've worked really hard to get here and to kind of finally win a Blue Banner. It's really exciting and to get an award. And of course, Lucy, she's a rock star on the team and uh, I'm glad to see that she gets recognized for that. Awesome. Well, that's it for the uh, first week here at the Indiana St. Joseph event. Uh, see you guys for the next two events as well. Hopefully we have more of these. This was Lenny signing out. Bye. Thanks again, Tyler, for showing that. Uh, and congrats again to 3940. Uh, an incredible um, set of matches and hope to see a lot more of you guys the rest of the season. Next event, we're going to talk about the Miami Valley Regional. And it's been a while since I've talked about or said the word regional, but 60 <laughs> teams competed at the Miami Valley Regional in Ohio. And quite the story came out of this event. While many teams here were trying to see the old-fashioned way, Team 302, the Dragons, were in the uh, were in 25% of all HAB RP matches at this event, and they also had a 4 RP match. This would push them to the top spot as the number one alliance captain. They would go on to select uh, the number two seed of the Metrobots, 3324, and Team 5724, Spartan Robotics. The number one alliance was able to score an, uh, on a, on uh, through their quarterfinal matches, sorry, uh, they were able to score about five uh, hatches as well as cargo, um, and that managed to bring their numbers uh, up into nine for both hatch and cargo during the semifinals. However, semifinals two, they ended up having a loss due to a 24 penalty points. And from the video that I, I was able to watch on the Blue Alliance, I don't really know what those penalty points were for, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure the refs had their reasons, but it looked really weird. Um, and they uh, they did end up to win the uh, end up going on to win the third match uh, against Alliance number four, making their way to the finals. Now this is where the story unfolded at Miami Valley. Um, I think this is an outstanding story. In finals match one, their Alliance partner 5724 uh, unfortunately had some issues, and so the number one Alliance called in the backup robot of 1317 Digital Fusion, um, and then after losing finals match one, would go on to win two straight and win this regional event. So great job, number one alliance, to keep your uh, poise and call in a backup, have the synergy to still go on to win the event. That's outstanding. Congratulations also, 3324, gold, silver, uh, engineering inspiration, cling bling for them. And team 537 on their seventh regional chairman's award. Praneet, wow. let's talk about Humber. What, what an incredible feat by 537 there with the seventh regional chairman's. All right, let's move on back up to north of the border. Um, week two, the inaugural Humber College District event uh, was a great addition for an already competitive circuit in Ontario. Uh, 32 teams came out to compete at their first um, event of the season. Notable, notable teams including 1114, 865 Warp, 3683 Makeshift, 4039. Um, right out of the gates, Team 1114 started with a 4 RP match, you know, full rocket, getting a, the HAB bonus, and established themselves as the team most likely to lock in the number one seed with that sweet chain link bar climb uh, with teams recognizing their prowess on the rocket if left undefended, um, you know, defense got a lot harder and the rocket RP became more and more elusive. Um, and, you know, in, in the close running, surprisingly, out of all the teams was team 7603, a rookie sensation out of Bill Hogarth Secondary School. Um, they hung in there with their, you know, uh, strength of schedule and their consistent four or five cycles of match in and out. And they were in second place until the very last qualification match that they played in, in which Team Dave beat them and jumped over and, you know, they claimed their second spot. Now, Team 1114, through their 12 matches uh, and averaging about three RP a match, claimed the first spot and picked Team Dave, who most definitely accepted this time round and swooped up an incredibly well-driven hatchbot in Team 771 SWAT. Uh, the alliance formed, you know, it was formidable with 1114 and Team Dave were the top two cyclers at this event, according to scouting data multiple teams had. And it was going to be a daunting task for anyone to try and stop uh, both the teams, if, if at all, um, to keep the match in reach. Starting in the quarterfinals, Symbotics drew defense as expected, and Team Dave quietly finished up the cargo ship and populated some game pieces in the low level of the rocket. At one point in time, Team 4343 of the 8th Alliance, Max Tech, chased 1114 across the field, but then the number one alliance executed like a super, super slick switcheroo, or as uh, Symbotics' coach Matt called it, uh, a weird bing bong. I don't know where he came up, he comes up with that stuff, but it was great. And, you know, we populated... The, the game pieces on our cross-court rockets and and you know that that itself it was just like you know how are you going to defend both these robots at once and like who, who are you going to pick on 
In semis, however, um, Team 3683 drew the wrath of the fourth alliance defender, 6141. But, you know, they just kept chugging on, pushing them back, and dunked on them defending haters with that long-reach arm. And, uh, you know, it was just like, it was all okay. Um, making the way to the finals against the third alliance, 40, uh, 4039 makeshift, uh, 865 warp 7 and 2198. They were handed a free field with some Blue Alliance robots dying, and they put on a show for the people watching, scoring 105 raw points. And of that, 48 were cargo points. Like, they, they scored 16 balls and 12 hatch panels. They scored 28 game pieces combined. And it was incredible. It was incredible. The Sandstorm synced up to do four hatches and four preloaded cargo, and then the, the Alliance never looked back. Um, throughout the playoffs, 771 was providing crucial defense in the far side in quarters and semis. And then they were providing timestamps for strategic match actions as needed for all of us. So they did a really, really good job. And we just meshed really, really nicely. Congratulations to everyone on the first line, 771, 1114, and 3683 for taking the event in such a dominating fashion. And congratulations to Team 771, especially for their gold, silver, cling bling for winning the EI award. All right. So bringing it back down to the Midwest Regional, and I think everyone was a little bit surprised on how it turned out, which it makes sense. They moved the Midwest Regional up three weeks, so you know the amount of how prepared teams are is going to be all over the place. But if there was one team that I would say came prepared, it was 3695 Boximus Prime. They completely blew me away with the robot this year, and it was a huge step forward from what I've seen from them in previous years. Huge quality, huge amount of quality. Uh, Foxmas Prime's robot was a perfect speed for the driver to, mover, to maneuver quickly and efficiently, as well as having a solid auto for a first regional and a consistent level 3 climb. Foxmas Prime took the first seed, picking up team 930, I'm going to butcher this, Muck Bears? McWanago Bears. Uh, and 16, the Bomb Squad, was close behind them, though, with, as the second seed, and they picked up the fourth seed of 2338 Gear It Forward, who I think did an amazing job this year. They were a rocket scoring machine in qualifications. And so that moved team 5934 Crobotics to the third seed, which was also pretty amazing. Uh, you know, they had a solid climb and it was just a huge step forward in quality from them. Uh, they picked up 5847 Ironclad as their first pick, leaving, te leaving team 48, team Elite, to pick up 111 Wild Stang. Defense was using qualifications quite a bit, but in eliminations, it was seriously turned up to 11. Defense, by and large, decided a good portion of those elimination matches. And although I prefer, I personally prefer seeing teams fill the rocket, which is very difficult to do while defended. Einstein matches, so take it with a grain of salt. Regardless, though, defense was king. Quarterfinals went as expected with the top four moving on, and it was only in the semifinals that things started to get interesting. The first seed fell to the fourth seed, much attributed to 2830 Riverside Robo Tigers playing some great defense against the first seeded alliance. Another important factor, however, was Wild Sang's amazing driving under heavy defense. They were able to draw all the heat and still score while Team Elite was free to do what they needed to do. On the other side of the bracket, astonishingly, the second seed fell to the third. I say astonishingly because to me that alliance was perfect. You got two great scores of Bomb Squad and Gear Forward, and they picked up 1675 Ultimate Protection Squad as the third which was a great idea because their driver or their drive coach loves to play defense. So it just seemed like a perfect combination of an alliance. And they looked to be doing well, and Bob Squad was able to do a lot of work against heavy defense, but 2338 was struggling a bit in Teleop. The nail in the coffin was Bomb Squad not being able to climb at the level three uh, at the end of the game. And on the finals, where it was the third seed versus the fourth, and both sides were keeping pace with each other, the fourth seed alliance was able to nudge away a victory uh, with their Sandstorm points, giving the title of Midwest Champs to Team 48, Team Elite, 111 Wildstang, and 2830 Riverside Robo Tigers. And although Core did pick up that silver gold cling bling with their chairman's win. All right, on to the top 10 really quickly. Praneet, take it away. All right, coming in at uh, number 10, it's 36.95. Number 9 is Team 930. Number 8 is Team 525. And coming in at number seven, I got that right. Yeah, it's warp seven. Number six, we got Ontario again, makeshift robotics. At number five, we have team 2052, Nightcrawler. Number four, it's team Delphi Elite. Number three, it's Wild Stang, 111, returning to the top three after a long, long hiatus. And number two, it's uh, team Dave with that two-jointed arm. 
And no surprise to anyone, number one, it's Team Alone 14, same botics. Just a right, quick fourth, editorial note. Previews. Just a quick editorial note on there. Um, team 16 uh, did rank in the top 10, but f- they get ranked in their region where they're from. So just a heads up on that, that this is all geographically based. This is all geographically based. Thank you, Tyler. All right, moving on to uh, next week's previews. Take it away, Parth. So at Georgian College, we're going to have just a few teams coming in uh, from Michigan, as well as obviously our local Ontario teams. Teams we haven't seen compete yet. 1325, 781, 2013, and 1305. Can't wait to see what happens there. Uh, it's a first for many at Ryerson as well next weekend. Not- most notably, 5406 Celtex and 2706 Merge Robotics. A lot of teams take stage for the second time, including 188 and uh, among the notable names. Let's see how that goes out for people. All right. So we had to do be a little bit quick near the end, but thank you to everyone who has watched. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and, and just know that this is the place to go for more FRC in your life. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it, but if not, we totally understand, and we are just delighted to have you on board. Next up is Best of the West, but stick around for that Behind the Bumper interview with 2052 Nightcrawler and an interview with Team Elite's drive coach in the Midwest Regional. On behalf of myself, driver, sorry, 48's driver. On behalf of myself, Chris, Parth, Pranit, Lenny, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Talk to you next week on We the North Recap. So long. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.